Let's take a look at alcohol and what is its impact on things like memory. We all know that there are guidelines around what's considered to be a safe limit for drinking, but those guidelines are very different depending on which country you're in. And the question is, even though the research is the same, why does every country have such different guidelines? So with that, this is a fascinating study. It came out in 2017, and it's probably the longest study that I've found looking at the impact of alcohol consumption on memory decline. So let's get started. Before we get into all of the fun details about the study, we have to define a unit. And the reason this matters is because unlike, you know, thinking about glasses and, and milliliters or grams, everything is divided into units when we talk about alcohol. So essentially, if you look at a unit of alcohol, what is it? It's really about a half a glass of wine is what you're looking at or a half a glass of beer is what you're looking at. So this is a quick down and dirty summary for you to keep in mind. Now, with that being the case, let's take a look at something very interesting. Let's compare UK versus the United States when it comes to alcohol consumption. So what's the difference? Well, in UK, you basically are allowed to have, if you're going by the guidelines on a healthy basis, about five glasses of wine. This is five large glasses of wine per week, whether you're a male or a female. But in America, the guidelines are very laxed. So you're looking at nine glasses of wine for men. So very different, nine glasses of wine versus five glasses of wine in the UK. So then let's get into even more confusion because when we look across the world, what we find is, is that for men and for women, the guidelines are so different. Look at Spain, for example, look at how high they are for men, look at US, Ireland, Czech Republic, Denmark, New Zealand. So very different guidelines. Now, to make matters even worse, Look at what the average guidelines are for both men and women. That's the middle table and the right table for you guys. And you'll see that United States is the second highest when it comes to guidelines. And same thing, so Chile, of course, is number one tied with the United States for number one. But everywhere else is so much lower. And this, of course, has to do with what the lobbying efforts are of the alcohol and beverage industry in there. So with that, let's get into this study. So what they wanted to do was, what happens if you drink a lot and if you drink over long years, what happens to both the structure of your brain and on memory test itself? So this is a prospective study, which is very important because what they did was, they started at a time frame and followed these people over time. So they didn't just cherry pick the data and look in what's already happened, they looked forward. And they had about 550 randomly selected people. And what's interesting is when they first started the study, they didn't have access to advanced imaging studies like MRI, but these, those came in later in the study. So they had a follow-up of 30 years. That's a long time for people to be followed. And what's interesting about that follow-up is, is that they were every five years, they were measuring all sorts of things. So one of my pet peeves is whenever there's a study and they only measure something once. Here, they measured it every five years. So you got all of these phases and they measured brain function or memory function at phases three, five, seven, nine, and 11. So essentially, they had several intervals in which they went ahead and measured what was going on. Okay, so they did two kinds of memory tests. They asked for lexical test and semantic test. These are just fancy terms. You don't have to really know them, but just remember the idea is to test specific parts of memory. So how many words can be generated with a specific letter or how many words in a specific category? These are all timed tests. So what did they look for? Well, they wanted to see how many people drank, how often they drank, and did they have any signs of dependence? So using a validated questionnaire like the CAGE screening questionnaire. And of course, their criteria, safe drinking was less than 14 units per week for women, less than 21 weeks, I'm sorry, 21 units per week for men. And this is much more relaxed than of course the UK criteria. And an unsafe drinking, of course, was more than that. So what's interesting about looking at the participants was one, it seemed like the unsafe drinkers, which means the drinkers who drank more than the recommended guidelines, they actually had higher IQs to begin with. So these were smarter folks. Yet, 
<laughs> despite being the fact that they were smarter folks, they actually smoked a lot more. So they were higher amounts of smokers in this part. All right, so what did they find? Now here's where it gets really interesting. I remember this was a 30 year study and what they found here was that the highest alcohol use, they found that parts of the hippocampus, which is responsible for memory, actually shrank more. So the more you drank, the longer you drank, the more your hippocampus shrank. And this was dose dependent, which meant the higher you drank, the more the effect. And then when they looked at people who drank most versus who didn't drink, what they also found was that the connections between the right and the left hemispheres of the brain also had lower connectivity. And then finally, when they looked at cognitive function, remember, which is what? It's memory, right? So when they looked at memory, they found that there was faster decline in word recall if you drank a lot. And by the way, it didn't matter if you drank one to seven units or greater than 21 units, it was dose dependent as you can see on this graph. So those red dashes are the one to seven units and the gray, I'm sorry, not gray, this is light purple. <laughs> light purple dashes are the greater than 21 units had the fastest decline. So there was no safe limit and there wasn't any evidence that somehow light drinkers had a protective effect. This is another common myth that people hear a lot. So of course, there's some limitations to the study you want to know about. First, these are people who are telling what they're drinking. This is correlation. This is not causation. In other words, it's very hard to tell that this caused it. And the UK population, remember, especially the drinkers were mostly educated and middle class. And in the part that we were looking at, the people who drank also smoked. So how do we know that all of this effect wasn't just because they were more likely to be smokers than they were drinkers? And then, of course, could it be the opposite? In other words, people who were having some kind of disease and their hippocampus were more likely to decline were the ones more likely to drink. Is there some kind of reverse causality? Despite all of that, there's some take homes that I want to make sure you understand. First, the common myth of somehow light drinking is protective, at least for memory, there is no evidence in this study. Then I still believe that the UK limit, which is 14 units per week, which is about five glasses of wine per week, is a much safer and better limit than the US limit. And then US limit, I do think it's probably a little bit on the higher side and there's a lot of lobbying behind it. So even though we can't get it to match UK, I do think the UK data uh, is more supportive. So most important is as we talk about self principle, remember sleep, exercise, love and food. And in all of that, alcohol is part of self. What that means is, is that cutting down how much you drink is on the food side is part of having a healthy diet. So as far as that goes, looking at the UK drinking limits or even lower than that may actually be part of a healthy lifestyle. So I want to thank you so much for checking this out. Don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel for more videos. Please follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and please check out our website, selfprinciple.org. Thank you so much. Always try to be kind to one another. We are on this planet for such a short time. Self Principle is really about trying to make the world just a little bit better. Thanks for all your support. Bye-bye.